Hello, I am Ryan, and this is Ecclesiastes chapter 4. This is a great chapter full of juicy, true to the word, wise views on inhumanity, compassion, overwork, underwork, contentment, envy, solitary life, accompanied life, youth, age, folly, and wisdom. If you don't believe me, go ahead and read the chapter for yourself. The greater context this chapter ties to is concerning the second part of the book called Work and fear before God whose work endures, covering verses 3-9 to 6-7. The redeemed are to be doing things to give God honor corresponding to what God is. And this task which God has given to us does not become vain, but remains valuable forever. In this chapter, we go through the second section under the second part of the book called Contentment or Envy, covering verses 3-22 and 4-16. The last verse of the previous chapter states that the best thing to do is to be very happy with what productivity one has, because that is the territory given to a person by God to live in in their life. Ecclesiastes 3-22. So I saw that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his work, for that is his lot. Who can bring him to see what will be after him? This means that we should be content. Be content. I'm grabbing your shoulders and shaking you. Be content. Wake up. Be content. Why waste brain cells worrying beyond today? Who can bring you to see past today? We are allotted by God a range in which to live our lives. We have free will and we can do stuff that God doesn't want us to do, but we cannot do things outside of God's plan and we can't even do things outside of our strength to withstand temptation. 1 Corinthians 10.13 no temptation is overtaking you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. In chapter 4, we see that envy and lack of contentment feel the futile drive for earthly satisfaction. Ecclesiastes 4.4 4. Then I saw that all toil and all skill and work come from a man's envy of his neighbor. This also is vanity and a striving after wind. Remember that you must be content. Be content. <laughs> this is a little melodramatic to like put my arms out here. It's like 3D action. But I'm trying to like nail it down that you have to be content. I have to be content. I have to learn how to be content. So do you. If you overwork yourself, you're probably doing it out of envy of others. Maybe you're not, but envy is, is the opposite of contentment. Start over. Relearn how to look at toil. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It's all about contentment with what you have coupled with stepping out to grow in Christ, provided that you've accepted Christ already. Elsewhere in chapter 4, we learn that there is strength and protection in numbers. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Going through your toil in life accompanied is better than being alone. You are helped by people being with you, and you help others by being there for them. The only one that we really need at our side is Jesus. Have you realized your error of sin and your need for Christ? We've all sinned, and we need Christ to save us from the judgment that's due for us. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to step aside from my talking points for two seconds. I really fall apart if I don't have something to read from, but I'll just say just from the bottom of my heart that you need Christ. I'm a simple person, so I can't really say more than that. Um, you may have heard this for the umpteenth time, but how many times do you have to hear it before it, it, it reaches you, before you make the decision to follow Christ? Follow Christ. I have to read off a page in order to do this, these videos. And I have a list and my delivery is, is a bit cold. I sound like Jeffrey Figer, a, a lawyer in Michigan. It's, it's really not the most effective 
means of communication, these videos that I make. Others can do them better, but I'm doing them. I don't see other people doing them. And I'm just here to say, you need Christ. I, that's maybe the ultimate thing I could tell you if you haven't accepted him yet. After that, you know, you, if you if you come to Christ, you, I mean, you give your life to him, but, you know, you accept his sacrifice for your sin and you follow him. And you, after that, you, you live for God. You fear God, as it says, and we'll find out in the end of Ecclesiastes, keep his commandments. And you love others, you know, like love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then finally, you reach others, like I'm hopefully doing with you. And yeah, you may say that I'm proselytizing you. Sure, I'm proselytizing you. Say it all you want. I, I hope I'm doing it out of a pure, non-hypocritical way. And even if I am, say I'm like the biggest hypocrite in the world, because honestly, in many ways I am. You don't even know. I don't know about you, you don't know about me. It doesn't take away from the truth of what I'm saying. It doesn't. N nothing that you could find fault with in this video, aside from my points, takes away from the points themselves. So I'm shaking you again, shaking you by your shoulders, you know? Be content. But more than being content, in order to be content, you, you know, you have to find Christ. You have to accept Christ. I mean, he's actually found you. You just, it's a gift that he's given to you. Accept him. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. And here are five questions to, and here are five questions to consider for this chapter. One, this chapter, do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? Two, where does Jesus tie in with this chapter? Three, how can you take your problems and shrink them from being thorns in the flesh into mirrors where God can shine off you the most? I don't know if that's the best analogy in the world, but try to get at what I'm saying. Four, should a missionary go out into the field in a desolate place alone according to the Bible? Five, what type of people do you know that aren't envious through their intense work? Can you work hard and be humbly content? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Pray for me. Goodbye or God be with you.